Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to talk to you about the case of Kristen Smart. Now Kristen Smart, she actually lived not far from me where her parents, I believe they still live there today, but she, that's where she, and that's why I really wanted to talk to you about this case because she's still, it's still an active case of a missing person. So let's go ahead and just get into it. Kristen Stewart went missing on May 25th, 1996. She was 19 years old and attended Cal Poly. Now, she this was actually her first year as a freshman in Cal Poly when she went missing. She was a six foot one, blonde haired, blue eyed girl. She had lots of friends, was very sociable, and I she did swimming. Swimming. I'm not sure if she swam on the team at Cal Poly or not. But I know she did swimming, so she was really athletic. She was very close with her parents. She called them every Sunday, at least at least once a week. Sometimes every day she would call them, but at least once a week. So on Friday, May 24th, she called her parents and told her parents that she had really great news. She was so excited, and she said she'd call them on Sunday. So... Her parents were like, okay, they were expecting that call on Sunday, and there's, they were like, you know, they didn't know what it was about because Kristen did. There was a party on Friday night that she was going to attend, and she asked her friends if they wanted to go. They some had to study for tests, and some, um, there were some other reasons why, but they just didn't go. And then she had one friend that was actually supposed to go with her, but she ended up bailing at the last minute. So these were her close friends. So. She knew people still that were going to be at the party, so she wasn't, you know, she she was still going to go. Now, just like at any college party, um, there was going to be drinking, and she was 19 years old, so she was underage, but I mean, what college kid that goes to a party doesn't actually drink? I mean, I know there are some out there, but most of them do drink the party was gonna be at a fraternity called kappa chi there at cal poly and there was going to be drinking and she drank heavily they were to believe be because they, she passed out on the lawn now she normally doesn't drink heavily like her sister said that and i believe a few friends said that that she never drank heavily so for her to drink that much to pass out it really we don't know what happened so she was passed out on the lawn and a couple students were walking by, Cheryl Anderson and Tim Davis. And like good people, you know, you should always help another person out. Um, they picked her up and helped her walk her to her dorm. Now Tim Davis drove there, so he actually um, was like, she. he left Kristen with Cheryl because... Um, he was going to go drive home and so she was supposed to walk with him and somehow this boy named Josh Flores came. They were walking to Kristen's dorm and Cheryl didn't want to walk all the way over there so she left him with Paul Flores and she kind of didn't want to but at the same time it was super late. It was 2 a.m. in the morning and she just didn't want to walk all the way over there. So. Paul Flores said, yeah, it's okay, you know, I'll take her. So they were walking, and Paul Flores said that he kept putting his hands around her waist because she kept, you know, stumbling over. Now, this is the last time anybody would ever see Kristen Smart. By the time Sunday rolled around, her mother was expecting her call and she never called and she's like well it's memorial weekend maybe you know she got mixed up on her days so she waited until monday and by about noon on monday when she realized that kristen still hadn't called she went ahead and called one of kristen's friends and or her roommate i'm not sure which one a friend said no she hadn't seen her she hadn't heard from her so she went ahead and called around to see if anybody had heard from her and nobody had so she called her mom back or no she actually called campus security or campus police and she said that nobody has heard from her so they called kristen's mom and kristen's mom was expecting she thought it was gonna be kristen on the phone and it wasn't it was the police or the campus place and that's when like her heart just like dropped so she tried having campus 
security or whatever they're called, um, she tried having them file a missing persons report with the police and they didn't. They were hesitant, they were very hesitant to do so just because they're like, oh, maybe, you know, she went on a trip because it's Memorial Weekend and students tend to do that. And Kristen's mom knew, was like, no, that's not my daughter. You know, my daughter wouldn't do that without at least telling us. And they're like, oh, she's a college student. But that didn't sit well with Kristen's mom. So she, or so her husband actually took the four hour drive to Cal Poly and put up signs around campus saying, have you ever, has anyone seen her? And people, like the word was spreading and nobody has seen her since Friday night. Finally, the police got involved and they were, they actually got to report a missing, per, missing persons report. And so finally, after three days, the, the police filed a missing persons report on May 28th, 1996. So Kristen's roommate actually looked at her stuff in, in their room because they shared a room and noticed nothing was missing. Her wallet, her keys, everything was still there. So they kind of ruled out the, you know, just leaving without telling anybody. At this time, Paul Flores, it came out that Paul Flores was accused of stalking another girl on campus, but she never filed a report about it. A month and a half after she has been reported missing, they finally brought in the, cada ca the cadaver dogs. Now these dogs are the, the ones that smell and sniff if there's been a dead body. So they did this obviously so much later after she went missing. And after they actually had all the dorms clean, the dogs on campus and they had them smell. And they go to room 128, Santa Lu Luisa Hall. And guess whose room that was? It was Paul Flores's room. So Paul Flores actually had a roommate. Um, I forget his name, but I'll insert it right here. And so when you walk in, because I personally have been in these rooms, when you walk in, half of the side is one person's room and half the side is the other person's room. Well, it's one big room, but you know, it's split. So they, the dogs took them to the left side and that was Paul's side of the room. Now the dogs went to the end of the bed and that's where they stopped. So if you didn't know that the dogs have about 10,000 times better smelling capabilities than humans, so they can smell a dead body where a dead body's been. But of course, like always, this isn't enough evidence to confirm that he killed her. Paul actually confided in his roommate, Derek, that he indeed killed Kristen and put, brought her to his mom's house. Again, the this wasn't enough. It wasn't solid evidence um, pointing Paul to the murder. So he Paul actually had scratches on his knees and a black eye. So when the police asked him how he got the black eye, he said, oh, like him, his friend Jeremy, Jeremy Moon and him were playing basketball or some basketball game and he Jeremy actually elbowed him. So the police actually found out that this wasn't true because they went and asked Jeremy, Jeremy and he said no that didn't happen. He already had the black eye when he came. They once again talked to Paul and asked, you know, we talked to Jeremy, Jeremy and he he didn't elbow you and he they're asking him for the real truth and Paul was like oh I didn't want to tell you because it's embarrassing and so he said that he was putting a surround system or a stereo system in his car and he hit his eye on the steering wheel now okay I've hit myself on the steering wheel many times but I've never like it's never a circle where it's a black eye so I don't know how exactly I mean maybe it's possible I don't know but come on like that just sounds it doesn't sound like a real solid you know thing that he actually that actually happened to him also 
it wasn't just Derek that said that Paul killed her. Um, I believe it was Cheryl, though one of the girls who was helping Kristen walk home. She was the one saying, oh, something happened to her, like, Paul killed her. And I only saw one source that actually said this, so I'm not sure if it's, like, completely. Flores' mom actually owned a house, and she was renting it out. The house was in Arroyo Grande, Grande or Grand. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. And at the time, the police thought that somebody was actually renting the house, so they couldn't go and search. So strangely enough, around the time that Kristen went missing, Paul went to his mother's house with a friend and they were digging late at night. And this was confirmed by his mom's neighbor because his mom's neighbor was happened to be looking out the window and like see, thinking that this was strange, like two guys were digging. And he said that it was like about a seven by eight foot um, hole and it was about waist high and there was concrete I believe that's how it went and so he thought it was strange so he kept watching and watching and didn't like he thought it was like obviously strange but didn't really think anything of it until a week later when he saw Paul Flores' mugshot all over the news that's when he realized that's who I saw. That was the guy that I saw digging. So by 2002, Kristen's parents declared Kristen dead. So I want to say it was around 2006 when the renters of Paul's mother's house um, found a blue turquoise earring. And they thought it was weird because they thought they saw some dried up blood on it. So they gave it to the police. And that actually pushed the police to go ahead and dig up the yard. And they didn't find anything. They actually had the dogs come in and point them to wherever. And they pointed them to this one spot. And they dug it up and didn't find anything. Another thing is that the earring mysteriously vanished. So that earring was Kristen, was most likely Kristen Small's earring because... Her parents said that she loved those earrings. Those were her favorite pair of earrings and she never, she wore them most of the time. So with all this happening to Kristen Smart's parents, they tried to sue Paul Flores for wrongful death and they later retracted that. They dropped the charges and then he, he I believe him or his parents went after Kristen Smart's parents for emotional distress. They were not able to convict Paul Flores for the murder of Kristen Smart even after all the witnesses came forward and you know showing everything that has happened they didn't have any solid evidence. In 1997 Kristen's parents pushed for the Kristen Smart Act. Now this act goes to every public school I'm not sure if it's in every state, but I know it's, it is in California. So every public school and college, they have to report someone missing, like the campus police, if they have gone missing and they're being told that they're missing, no matter if they really are or not, just for the safety of everybody. So let's get into some theories about what happened to Kristen Smart. Now, the most obvious theory which I believe to be true is that Paul Flores murdered Kristen Smart. Now I I think that I feel like since he was at the same party maybe they were you know he was eyeballing her and since he already had a prior um stalking incident I believe I have a feeling that he was like somewhat stalking her and maybe like drugged her drink or something either at the party or maybe after when he was taking her home and he had bad intentions he wanted to have sex and maybe she either like woke up and realized what was happening or after it had happened and she realized what had happened and she tried to fight and she, he knew she was going to say something and so he quickly, you know, tried to cover it up. And his family and friends helped him cover up the murder, her murder. Theory number two. Theory number two is 
I think the least likely, but she ran away. She just left everything and ran away. But that makes no sense. She had a good life. She, you know, was in contact with her parents. She had a great social life. She was doing well for herself. So I feel like that just really isn't a great, like, I don't believe that to be true. So with that being said, if for some reason she is still alive, I will leave the number up here which you can call if you happen to see her. She would now be 41 years old. She has blonde hair, brown eyes, 6'1", so it will be kind of hard to miss her because of her height. I hope you all enjoyed this video and have a great day. Bye guys.